Hey guys, this is Pastor Brent with Kairos Church. Thanks so much for tuning in to our podcast today. I hope the message inspires you and encourages you and it challenges you to apply God's word to your life every single day. Enjoy the message. We are uh, in week three of our series, Why Am I Here? Uh, The last couple of weeks we've talked through, uh, you know, why are we at our our workplace? Why are we in different relationships? Um, And today, like Chris said, I I literally want to share why I'm here. Um, And this is going to kind of be a two-parter, because this week I'm going to share why I'm here, and then next week I'm going to share why you're here. So I'm going to talk about, I want to know my role, and I want you to know your role. Turn to someone and say, know your role. Now tell them to shut your mouth. Now if you ever watch WWE and The Rock, that's a little rock quote, know your role and shut your mouth. Anyway, probably shouldn't be telling you to say that to each other in church, but... Sometimes uh, you got to tell people to shut their mouth. Anyway, so my, my role uh, as a pastor, and we're going we're gonna to talk about this, and this is kind of the, the premise of the next two weeks. My role as a pastor and some of the staff and leadership here is to equip believers, equip the body of believers to build up the body of believers so that we can go and share Jesus with others, right? And we are all called to this. Now, I'm here for you, but I'm also here to equip you. I want to give you the main point for today, and that is this, that we are called to minister so that we can all be ministered to. We are all called to minister, so that we can all be ministered to. And I'll I'll repeat this, but that's kind of what I want to talk about over the next couple of weeks, how we're all called to minister, so that we can all be ministered to. Um, And I want to to take a look today at 1 Peter. We're going to be talking about my role, me knowing my role. 1 Peter 5, verse 2, it says this. It says, Shepherd God's flock for whom you are responsible. Watch over them because you want to, not because you are forced. This is how God wants it. Do it because you are happy to serve, not because you want money. Do not be like a ruler over people you are responsible for, but be good examples to them. Then when Christ, the chief shepherd, comes, you will get a glorious crown that will never lose its beauty. I want to unpack that today and kind of talk about what that means in my life. But let's pray before we do that. God, we are thankful for today, for this, the worship that we got to have. Uh, we're not thankful for that hour of sleep we lost, but it's okay, God. We'll, we'll, it'll be all right. We'll get over it. We're just ready today to, to learn about you, learn about your word, learn about, uh, man, my role as a pastor and what that means for uh, each of us as a, uh, as a believer within the local church. God, speak to us today. In Jesus' name, amen. So in First Peter chapter 5, verse 2, it talks about the shepherd, being a shepherd. Um, that is my call. And, you know, most of you may call me Pastor or Pastor Brent, and it, you don't have to. It's not a big deal. I met a guy at Starbucks this past Thursday, and we were chatting, and he, we shared numbers, and he texted me later, and he just said, Brent, he apologized. He's like, I'm so sorry I should have called you Pastor. I'm like, dude, this is okay. It's not a big deal. But I'm, I'm called Pastor. And if you go throughout the Bible, this isn't going to be a term you're going to see very often. But it, it's derived from this, this term, shepherd. To be a shepherd like, like Jesus is our shepherd, to take care of the flock. Now, I, I wanted to kind of know my role and share my role with you. And so I found this, this list of, of what a pastor should do, right? This is, this is called the perfect pastor. This is it. The perfect pastor preaches exactly 10 minutes, condemns, <laughs> <laughs> condemns sin without hurting feelings. He works from 8 a.m. till midnight, and he's the church janitor. He makes 40 hours a week, has nice clothes, has a nice car, and he donates $30 of his week to the church. Uh, He's 29 years old, but he's got 40 years' experience. He's handsome with a full head of hair Mm, or uh, a killer beard. I added that one in there, so there's that. Uh, He has a desire to work with teenagers and spends most of his time with senior citizens. He smiles all the time, but with a straight face because he has a sense of humor that keeps him seriously dedicated to the church. (laughs) He makes 15 home visits a day and is always in his office for meeting and counseling. He never misses meetings, events, or or functions of any church ministry, and he's always busy evangelizing to the unchurched. Now, of course, you've come to the realization that these are all unrealistic expectations of a pastor, and really unrealistic expectations of one person. But here's what I do know. You you have expectations of me. Uh, When you came to this church, when you came to check it out, even as you've been here for a while, maybe you came from another church. And what I want you to do is I want you to Either you could write these down or just think about it. What, when you came to this church, what were you expecting? And maybe it was just like, what, what were you expecting me to do? Or what were you expecting to see? Because it probably wasn't this, right? Uh, I'm, I'm not in a bad way or in a good way. I'm not like other pastors. I'm, I'm the pastor that God called me to be. And so I'm different. And so maybe get a, get a mental image or just write down some things that 
you expected of me, or maybe it's something that your, your pastor at your last church did, or maybe you had a family church and you grew up there, and, and this pastor did this, and it's something that you love. Write that down. I'm just going to give you a few seconds. Write down your expectations of your pastor, whether it's me or another pastor. I don't know if you're visiting. What are your expectations of the pastor? Take a few seconds. Write that down while I drink coffee. That should be one of your expectations, that I drink coffee. All right, so you're writing that down. You can keep thinking about that. And here's what I want you, to, want you to do. Take your expectations, your list of expectations, and then multiply them by 200. Right? Because we are a growing church. We are a big church. We have about uh, you know, close to 200 adults that, that gather here every single week. And each of you has maybe the same expectations, maybe different. Uh, probably reasonable, maybe some unreasonable. But you take those expectations and multiply them by 200, and man, honestly, like I, I can't meet all of them. What I want to do is I want to kind of share with you um, a, a, a pastor acronym. So what, what I did, I don't do acronyms all that much, but I wanted to share with you, like, I wanted to help you understand who I am as a pastor. And so I came up with this acronym uh, that is pastor, and I'm just going to give you uh, a word for each letter in pastor. The first word uh, is, is for the P, is, is I'm a person. I'm a, I'm a person. I have feelings. I sin. I struggle. I, I get behind on things. I, I have heartache. I, man, I get off track. Um, pastors are people too. And I, I think a lot of times, for whatever reason, we elevate our pastors above that. Um, but I'm, I'm a person first. And I still mess up. And I, I, I still have shortcomings. And I still have failures. So I just wanted you to know that. Uh, maybe you were putting me up here. Please don't. Bring me down. Bring me down. I, I just honestly, I'm just, I'm a person uh, first, and, and I'm also a pastor. The second thing is A, I am an administrator, right? I, uh, I, as much as people don't like to use these two words, business and organization, with the church, at the end of the day, the church is still a business. I, I still have payroll. I still have employees. We still have an employee handbook. There's rules. There's procedures. There's facility. There's expenses. There's all of this business stuff that takes place. So I am an administrator as well. The S stands for shepherd. Now, we've already talked about that. I'm called to be a shepherd. Of course, I want to be loving you and guiding you and caring for believers. I want to be involved in your emotional and spiritual well-being. And as a shepherd, I want to protect you from the wolves, right? You go back to the illustration and the, and the shepherd protecting the sheep from the wolves. And, and that can come in many forms, sin and temptation, false doctrine. And that is my role to be your shepherd. The T stands for talking. I talk a lot. That's it. No, I'm just kidding. It's not really. Um, it's that I'm a teacher. First and foremost, I'm a teacher of God's Word. That's what God's called me to. And I'll share a little bit about that in a minute. But I also uh, am teaching discipleship. I'm, I'm raising people up to be more like Christ. Uh, I'm teaching people leadership skills, not only here in the church, but also in their family and in their workplace. And then I'm teaching you know, other people how to, how to preach and to teach and how to lead uh, a church. The O stands for others. It's putting others first. And I really don't have to expound on this that much. Me and my wife, as we've been in ministry, that is a part of it. It's always about putting your needs, your wants, your desires uh, behind and, and putting other people's first. And that's what me and my wife have, have done as we've you know, stepped into this role. We want to always put others first. And then the R, the very final thing, and this is important. You ready? I run this. Okay? That's what the R stands for. Uh, uh, no, actually, it stands for rebuke. Oh, yeah. <laughs> really, what it should stand for is ridiculous, because that is what I am. Um, but as you've seen, it is actually read. It's, it's, I'm, I'm a reader. I'm a learner. Uh, leaders are readers, um, and, and leaders are learners. And so, man, uh, I, I want to soak up God's Word. Uh, I want to soak up leadership. I, I want to know and understand Man, as much about God's Word so that I can help you know and understand as much as God's Word. But I'm also a, a reader and a learner so that I can be a better pa a person, so that I can be a better administrator, so that I can be a better teacher, and, and so that I can uh, be better at putting others first. So I'm constantly learning. So that's just a fun little acronym for me as a pastor, a person, an administrator, a shepherd, a teacher, putting others first, and a reader. Now let me just share... If you haven't figured this out, man, I'm, I'm wired a little bit differently. Uh, the way God has gifted me and called me to be a pastor is differently than most other pastors. And that's honestly is the same for, for every pastor. I'm wired different. My skill set, my, my passions, my giftings are a little bit different. I don't know if you know this. I'm a creative. 
I'm a very creative person. I love to create things. I like creating graphics. I like creating websites. I like creating uh, series. I like making spaces look cooler and coming up with wacky, weird ideas like diving for eggs um, in a ball pit, okay? So I, I am a creative. And as I stepped into ministry, that was one of the things that I brought to ministry. I brought my creativity to ministry and it led me to this place, but it's not something that has gone away. I love to create things. I love taking pictures. You'll, I don't know if you ever see me. I'll be running around here with a camera. I, that's just that's how I'm wired. I love it. I'm a very, very visual person, and that plays into who I am as a pastor. The other thing um, that, I, that I absolutely know is that when God called me to ministry, one of the, the big things he told me is that he wanted me to teach people his word, and that is what I do, and that is where I put a lot of my, um, my passion and my desire and my time into making sure that when I bring you the word, man, you take it and you apply it to your life and you understand it. Now, so those are some of my, my, my gifts and my passions, but I also have shortcomings, and so I did a spiritual gifts test, and I don't know if you've ever done one of these before. If not, I, I suggest it. Maybe I'll, I'll post one later this week. They're going to put this image up on the screen, but this will kind of help you understand who I am as a person and as a pastor. So you can see on the left there, leadership, administration, teaching, knowledge, wisdom, man, all those things are high. Knowledge, not so much, so pray about that. Um, <laughs> get that one up there. And then faith, y'all. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I lead by faith. That's how I live my life. I'm a very faithful person. I believe what God says. I believe God's word, man. I don't, I don't question it whatsoever. I'm a very, very faithful person. So those things I kind of talked about. But then you begin to look at some of these other things, like exhortation, and uh, service and helps, and mercy, and hospital. Y'all, it's bad. You know what I'm saying? And you're like, that dude's a pastor, and be like, oh, it's real bad. It's like it goes, wah, and it drops down. And I have a serious deficit when it comes to that stuff. And so I, I wanted to share that with you to say, like, man, this is, this is who God wired me to be. This is who I am. And I, I am, I'm constantly working on my weaknesses, but at the same time, it's, it, my natural giftings are what I'm going to operate out of. And then I'm going to bring other people alongside of me, like my wife, who all, all those things, like those things are like way up for her. Thank goodness, right? That she, she balances me up. So that helps you understand me as a person. But then I, I also have ministry roles. My ministry roles is, you know, writing and, and, and preaching sermons every week. I, I, I love uh, developing leaders, um, not, again, not just within the church, but uh, I just want to develop leaders within their home, within the workplace. I, I'm constantly casting vision, where our church is going, what our church is about, making sure we're not getting off track of what God called us to do. I'm always keeping it fresh and real, y'all. I love doing crazy, wacky things, even if they don't work. Right? You've got to fail forward, um, so I love doing that. Um, I, I, I'm doing uh, I'm meetings, I'm meeting needs, uh, I'm, I'm studying God's Word. There's set up and tear down that's a part of this, there's community involvement, and there's you know, just our online presence. Again, that goes back to my, my gifting and ministry. And so those are my ministry roles. Then I have family roles, right? I am a father of six. I could just be done there, right? <laughs> just I could be it. Uh, but we're also, uh, we're also foster parents, and so that is another ministry. And so we currently have seven. I'm also a husband. There's bills. I got debt. I got lawn and house stuff that I don't do good at. Uh, and, and there's insurance, and there's schooling. And then, you know, I also got to keep it fun and joyful and activities. So I, I have my family role. But then I also, I told you, that this is a business. I have my organizational roles. There's bills i got to pay. There's meetings i got to do. There's evaluations. There's hiring. There's payroll. There's budgets. There's facility needs. And so there's, there's a lot that, that I do. And I'm not sharing this to say, oh, look at him. He's doing so much. No, 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 no. I don't want you to feel bad for me. I'm also not trying to boast. That, like, look at all that I can do. When, when me and my wife answered this call, we knew the burden of what we were being called into. That ministry is not easy. Ministry is messy. And we, we knew that, and we knew it was the greatest call in the world, but I'm sharing this so that you understand that I, I cannot do it alone. No pastor can do it alone. So when you, you, you take all of those things I just shared with you, and then you take your list of expectations, multiply that by 200, it's a lot. It's a lot. And I desire more than anything to be a shepherd like, like Psalm 78. Here's what Psalm 78 says. It'll be up on the screen. It says, David shepherded them with honor and integrity of his heart, and he led them in wisdom with strong and skillful hands. I want to be a, 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 a shepherd like Jeremiah 3 says. It says, and I will give you shepherds after my own heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. I love Jesus, and I love people, and I want to help more people embrace Jesus. As a matter of fact, I want to empower more people to help more people embrace Jesus. That is my calling. I want to help you. 
I want to help them. I want, I want to allow people to step into their gifts and their talents and their purposes within the church so that God can be given glory. you got to know that about me. I will always challenge you. If you don't know that, you're going to know it soon. I will challenge you to be better, to embrace Jesus, to get up and go, to utilize your gifts, your passions, to build up this body of believers so that we can go and share Jesus with others. Ephesians 4, verse 11, it says, And Christ gave gifts to people. He made some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to go and tell the good news, and some to have the work of caring and teaching for God's, of, of God's people. Christ gave those gifts to prepare God's holy people for the work of serving for ministry and to make the body of Christ stronger. My role is to, is to edify believers, to build up believers, so that they can then edify the church, build up the body, so that we can reach those who have not yet given their life to Jesus Christ. That is my role. Here's what I want to do. I want to, I want to expound on that a little bit more. Before moving on, I want, to, I want to give a little praise and encouragement. Because here's what I know, man. We are a young church. But even as a young church, we are a strong body of believers. Yes. There, there are so many people who have come alongside and who are serving and who are, and who are giving and who are praying. One of the things that me and my wife, we talk about a lot, the, the, the prayers and the praises. And so I'm going to share another little secret. I think for me, maybe, the reason I love it so much is because I get to read how, how many of you are praying for me and praying for my family and praying for my wife. It means a lot to us. And I know it's not just on Sunday. I know you guys are praying for us. Uh, one of the other things that I'm so, so thankful for is the amount of people who stand shoulder to shoulder with us every single week to support this ministry and make sure that we are moving forward in the right place. There are so many people. You see, my role is to minister to you so that we can all minister to others. And so I, I will say this, though, man, in order to minister to you, I've also got to be ministered to. And that is the reality. I'm going to minister to you, but you've got to minister to us. And so what I would say, man, is, is keep, keep praying for us. Keep encouraging us. Keep supporting us. And as a matter of fact, keep challenging us to, to, to grow in our walk and to grow in our relationships. Keep challenging us. Now, I want to I just share a, about some and celebrate some ministry leaders. And I'm going to throw out some names. And just know this. If I don't share your name, it's not because I don't value you. It might be because I forgot because sometimes I do that. Um, but you are valued, and I love you, every single one of you. But I just wanted to, I wanted to recognize the, uh, some people that um, are standing shoulder to shoulder with us every single week. I want to talk about our group leaders. We've been doing groups the last six to eight weeks. And, and these people have given up their time. They're studying. They're, they're getting, uh, you know, just some whatever they're working on, their curriculum, their book. And they're, man, investing in other people. So I want to give a shout out to Chris and Tracy Hanna. Jeremy and Christy Baylog, Steph and Josh Wadura, Zulima Felix, Jesse and Varney for balling it up, right? Uh, Kim and Ted Masson, and then me and my wife. Those are my group leaders. And every single week, yeah, let's do it. And they're opening their home. Man, they're, they're investing in people. They're doing life together, and it's so important. Then I want to give a shout out to our Connect team. Now, our Connect team is led by Jen Schleter and then Josh Fedora as well. And this, when you turn in your prayer and praise cards, this team gets it. And they, they you know, go over the prayers and the praises and they, they type them all up so that when we come on Sunday, we can share them with you and, and, and pray together. But they're also doing it during the week. There's a whole team of people who's reaching out, who's following up, who's supporting you. And it's an amazing team. We've got our presentation team that's making this place look good, right? Look fresh. we got lights. we got screens. we got the lyrics so you guys know what you're singing, right? Um, and, and then, you know, they just they put all this together. They set it all up. So Brittany Varney, Zach Varney, and Ted Masson are back there. And then they have a whole team of people who are hitting keys and pulling faders and doing all kinds of fun stuff. It's fun back there. Then our kids' ministry, y'all. Our kids' ministry, man, I love our kids' ministry. Um, we have just some amazing leaders over there. Of course, led by Jeremy and Christy Baylog, right? Christy Baylog is just owning it. Jeremy is just her, her, her rock and her support. And he's there, and he's been with her every step of the way. But, you know, we have Kim Masson is there, you know, doing this, being a service leader. And Kayla Baker, Baker's there, service leading. And then Tram's there. And we got Trisha. And we got all these people who are leading classes. And it's not just about what they do on Sunday, but man, they're, they're, they're investing in your kids. They're sharing Jesus with your kids. They're doing crafts with your kids. They're putting up with your kids. Like, we'll just throw that out there. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Um, but it's just an amazing team. And I'm so thankful for it, man. I don't know if you know this, but our, our church has a, a very high number of families and kids. And it's, it's because of what's going on over there. 
Um, and I, 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 I'm so thankful for them. Our first moments team. And when you show up to Kairos, when you showed up the first time, man, every time I hear it, we're so welcoming. I, I felt like everyone was so kind. And that's our first moments. It's the parking lot. It's VIP. It's greeters. It's uh, our protect and collect team. It's set up and tear down. It's all the things that you see. And that is led by Steph Gladura. She leads and runs that whole thing and makes sure that we have coffee and donuts and all that good stuff. But she's got some people. That, that are, that's working with her, that's standing shoulder to shoulder with her. Tommy and Tasha Valdez have been here with us since the beginning. Um, and they have kind of had their hands in all kinds of things. So Tommy helps lead our Protect and Collect team. He's also in charge of Teardown, and I kind of force him to be at setup sometimes, and I love him so much. Uh, <laughs> um, but man, they just, they fill in wherever. Tasha, yeah. Uh, Tasha, his wife, uh, helps uh, in, the, in the cafe area, getting that, making that all look good, making sure it stays fresh and good and all that good stuff. And there are some other leaders there as well. we got our VIP team leader, Brinkley, who's leading that. And our VIP team is so amazing. I'm so thankful for that. Z, leading our greeters, making sure there are people everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so she's doing that. And then I wanted to give a shout-out to a guy named Jerry England. Um, I don't know if you know Jerry. Uh, I don't even know what team he's on. I think all of them. I think he's everywhere, and I love it. He, he really is. He, he will fill in, and, and he's everywhere. He's, he's with me every single Saturday setting up. I'm so thankful for him. Um, and then one last shout-out for our uh, guy on the Teardown team. His name's Pete. Um, and Pete, every single Sunday, he stuffs all this in our trailer, and he makes sure it's immaculate and nothing falls and nothing breaks, and he's there every single week, and I'm thankful for him. Cody Roberts helps him as well, and so I'm thankful for those dudes. And then our worship team. Y'all know about our worship team. Now I mean, they're amazing. They're led by Jesse. His, his fiance is back here playing every instrument. I think she can do all at the same time. Um, and then his team that comes in every single week, man, and they're just they're rehearsing and they're doing stuff throughout the week, and it's amazing. And then the, the last person I really want to talk about is my wife, because I believe there's there's yeah. There's so much that she does that goes unseen, and really that's how she likes it. She doesn't like the limelight. She doesn't like being out front. She's doing all these things to make sure that our ministry and, and our church is excellent. You know, she has her own gifts and, and passions, you know, and she's leading up here. Like, that's where I want her to be every single week. Like, sing that song 18 times. And I'm good. Um, so she's doing worship. She's leading moment maker training. You know, she's helping uh, in kids. And she, you know, helped start that. But then she's like, Chrissy, take this. You're going to be better. I didn't. And, and, so, um, and so she's handed that over. And she's invested in those ladies. And she's helping in first moment. She's helping with set up and tear down. She's investing in the lives of people, and she's really filling the gaps where I'm failing, you know what I'm saying? Um, and so I'm just so thankful for her. And th again, there's so many people um, that are a part of this that serve every single week, and I am thankful for you. Every one of you and every gift is valued. So I want you guys to know that. And here's what I want to follow it up with is this. Where ministry teams are present, ministry joy is abundant, and we have a joyful church, and I am thankful for you. What we're doing now, we're serving for each other. We're serving with each other, and that brings joy. Again, for me, to best minister to you, you've got to minister to, and I believe so many of you are doing that. Now, we go back to the expectations and, and all that's taking place. I just, I, I want you to understand, like, I can't realistically minister all of you. You've also got to be ministering to each other. It's all about connecting. And I was, I was thinking about this, and, like, everything that we talk about is connect. It's all about connecting. If you want to get connected with me, with my wife, with other you know, uh, believers that are here in the church, you have got to engage. So there's a few ways you can do that. Connect. You can connect at the connect tent. Uh, I, I talk about it every single week. You want to come say hi? You want to pray? You want to talk? I'll be back there. If I'm not back there, we have a team that's back there. They want to invest in you. They want to talk to you. Get connected. You want to connect? Fill out your connect card. You know what I'm saying? Like We, we were really, really clever with this thing. Get, fill it out. Let us know the next steps. Let us know if you want to join a group. Let us know if you want to get baptized. Fill out your prayers and praises. Let us pray for you and celebrate with you. It's, that's how you make a connection. You want to get connected? Join a, you want to know what it's called? A connect group. Um, yeah, it's crazy. Mind-blowing stuff. And that's how you connect with other people. I, I have loved this last round of groups, especially couples gaming. We have just got to get to know people on a deeper level than we do here on Sundays. I'm thankful for it. That's how you connect. That's how you do community. Now, the last one, I'm about to change it because it doesn't say connect. And I, I didn't like it. It should follow up. It's serve teams. But I'm going to start calling them connect teams. Because guess what connect teams and serve teams do? They connect you. And, and you, get to, you get to serve alongside one another. And you get to, man, just blood, sweat, and tears by when you're serving and doing ministry together. Listen, we want to connect with you. 
And we want you to connect to the local church, to this body of believers. Here's what I also know. This, that our worship experience, what we do on, on Sunday, 9, 30, and 11, it connects us collectively, right? Like, we collectively come together, and we, we get to worship God, and we get to learn about God's Word, and we get to be in the Holy Spirit. But it's, this, it's these other things that I just mentioned that connect us personally, and they help us minister to one another. My wife and I, man, we, we just, we give our lives every single day for this church and for this ministry. We want to make Kairos a place where you can connect, and not just with us, but with everyone. With everyone. And see, connecting to the church, it's not just about uh, connecting with me and my wife. It's, it's about connecting with a body of believers to encourage you and to do life together with you. I want you to write that down. Church is about connecting with a body of believers, not just the pastor. First Corinthians. Leave that up there. Don't. Don't go to First Corinthians yet. Church is about connecting with a body of believers, not just the pastor. I think in a lot of cases there's so much pressure put on a pastor to talk with everybody and meet everybody and take time for everybody, but in the reality, you just you can't. I mean, you go back to Jesus' model. Like, I mean, he was, he was doing ministry with a lot of people, but he was investing in 12. I mean, you really get down to it. He had three dudes that were like his, his favorites. I, there was this other um, thing I came across, and it was like, pastors can't avoid favoritism. They're going to have some really best friends, and you got to be okay with that. Uh, so anyway, 1 Corinthians 12, 27, it says this. It says, together you are the body of Christ. And each one of you is a part of that body. Romans 12, 6 says, Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. We're all called to minister so we can all be ministered to. If you make church only about talking to the pastor and needing the pastor, giving prayer from the pastor, I want to let you know, I'm going to eventually let you down. I'm going to fail you. I'm not going to meet your expectations. I just... No one can meet those expectations. And I know and I, I've heard about pastors who've tried, who've tried to meet all the expectations and please everyone. And you know what ends up happening is they get burned out. They quit the church. They quit ministry. They walk away from their faith. If they don't get burnt out, what they do is they, they go to something, some sinful act or some immoral thing and they end up getting kicked out. And sometimes I think they do it consciously. Because it's just easier. You know what? If I want to get out of this, all i got to do is sin over here and they'll just be like, be done with me. And they won't want my help anymore because look at me, I sin. And that's the other thing. Like we, Man, we, we want our pastor to be this. And we put him up on a pedestal and when he sins, we're like, boom, let's get rid of him. And we forget he's a person. He's a sinner too, right? Your, your, your pastor's going to sin. He's going to have mistakes. But there, there are so many pastors that I've seen that have just, they've, they've tried to carry the weight of their congregation all on themselves and they can't do it. So it's, it's your call to connect with other believers. Depend on them. Be dependent on by them. Encourage them and, and, and be encouraged by them. Listen to them and be vulnerable with them. Pray with them and be prayed for by them. Use your gifts, your talents, your abilities to build up this church, this body of believers. We're all called to minister so that we can all be ministered to. Now, I'm, I, I've been called to be your pastor your shepherd, and I, I, I want to do my best to live up to the standards that Jesus set as the good shepherd, and that is who he is. Jesus is the good shepherd. In 1 Peter 5, 4, it talks about him being the chief shepherd. In John 10, 14, it says that he, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I, I know my own sheep, and they know me, just as my Father knows me, and I know the Father. And so he says, I sacrifice my life for the sheep. Now I was thinking about my calling as your shepherd, and I really, I, I view myself as a, as a temporary earthly shepherd that has been assigned, that has been called, that has been equipped by the everlasting heavenly shepherd, right? He, he, has, he has called me to this, to care for not my flock, but his flock, not my sheep, but his sheep, while I'm here on this earth. That's what I've been called to. I view myself as a, as a temporary pastor, and, and, and what I want you to know is that I, I will sacrifice much. I will, I will give much, but my sin, my selfishness will get in the way. My drive, my ambition, my, my discontentment, it, it's going to get in the way. Sometimes my flock, my, my, my little gaggle of kids is going to get in the way. I will fight for you, and I will sacrifice for you, but it will never be as much or as good as what Jesus did for you on the cross. He offered up his life and gave you salvation. 
And so I would say, man, yes, depend on me and come to us, but also lean and depend on the good shepherd, Jesus. He will never let you down. He will never fail you. You see, in him, our expectations are met. Our needs are met. Our security is met. Our salvation is met. Listen to his voice. Listen to his word. Man, heed his guidance, his direction, and his rebuke, and he will supply all your needs. What is what Psalm 23, 1 says? It says, the Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. And so I would say, go to him, and, and, and have your needs met by him. Allow him to supply all your needs, and in return, supply and sacrifice to live for and follow him, and to raise up his bride, the church, so that we can go into the world and tell more people about Jesus. We are all called to minister so that we can all be ministered to. I want to wrap it up and I just want to share just a few things. Minister to me and each other as I minister to you. Or really simply put, help me help you help others, right? Help me help you help others. Keep doing that. Keep ministering to us. Keep serving. Keep praying. Keep doing all those things for me and for the people sitting next to you and moment makers and your leaders and uh, staff members. And then pray. Pray for, for the staff, for Jesse and his fiance, for Josh and Steph, for Christy and Jeremy, man, for, for my wife. Man, pray for your staff. Pray for your leaders. I don't know if you know this or not, but there are, there are people at this church who are volunteering 10, 12, 15, 20 hours of their week for this ministry to make sure that, man, what Kairos is doing is reaching as many people as possible. Pray for them. Pray for their time with their families with friends, with, with their time with God. Continue to pray for wisdom and discernment against the enemy's strongholds. Because where God is moving, the enemy is coming up against it to try to stop it. So pray, pray for us. And then lastly, I challenge you, connect. Connect with other believers. Use the card, use the tent. Prayer and praise there. Get into a group, there's community there. Get into a, a, a team, they're serving there. What I want to do is I want to ask you guys to bow your heads, close your eyes, and I just, right now, I want to ask you to join me in praying. Praying for, for a staff. Right now, let's, I just want to lift them up. Just join me as I pray for them. God, right now, I am thankful for the staff at Cairo's Church, for the Baylogs, for the Guaduras, for my wife, for Jesse and, and Carrie and and all that they do uh, to be a part of this ministry. God, I lift them up to you. They are serving and they are sacrificing and they are carrying the burden. And so I lift them up to you, God, and I pray that you would man, send them support. Send them leaders and moment makers and people that would invest in them and, and care for them and build them up. God, I lift them up to you. God, I pray for our leaders. There's so many leaders within this church. That are, that are in over a ministry and are over moment makers and, and care and desire so much of, about their specific area of this church. God, I'm thankful for them. I'm, I'm thankful for you leading them here and them offering up and sacrificing their gifts and their talents and their passions and so that we can make you famous. God, lastly, I want to pray for our moment makers and these people who, who and got involved, got plugged in, and they're serving every single week. They're giving up their time. They're giving up their talents. And to make your church, your bride, beautiful. I am thankful for that. We continue praying for those, those three, the staff, the leaders, the, the moment makers. And then, will you, just, will you just take a minute to pray for my wife, for myself, and for our family. And I want to pray for you, God, today. I'm thankful for your word. I'm thankful for this calling. God, I'm thankful that you brought me to a place where I've realized that I could not do it all on my own and that you've brought these amazing people into this place to worship, to serve, to connect, and to do life together. I thank you for all the friendships and the relationships, those that, that challenge us and encourage us and support us. God, continue to build us up, continue to make us strong, continue to make us a tight-knit body of believers so that we can go out and help more people connect with your son. Jesus Christ. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. Amen.